Hello everyone, thanks for joining me for this week's episode of Let's Talk Orchids. This week we're going to talk a little bit about autumn and what you do for autumn time. Most of us know that uh, most orchids in autumn the uh, growth starts to slow down a little bit. Um, some plants start to rest. Um, there are some exceptions. Phalaenopsis actually start to do some really good root growth um, as well as putting out their flower spikes. Um, Sobrellias also have a tendency to uh, start sending out their roots and doing a lot of active roots as well. This is a good time for repotting both Sobrellias and Phalaenopsis in general. Um, Phalaenopsis you can pretty much uh, repot any time in the year. Um, even if they do have some spikes, uh, it's really not going to hurt them to repot them as long as you don't uh, cut a lot of the roots off. Um, so if you need any of those repotted, go ahead. As far as like dendrobiums and cattleyas, things like that, I don't even uh, repot them after uh, probably the end of June. So um, definitely no repotting there. So one of the things about uh, being autumn here is uh, with orchids is that a lot of things are starting to either bud up or, or bloom if they're winter bloomers. Um, I actually have a brass little linodosa here. Um, if you can see it in there it's got a couple of nice flower buds coming up you can see um, some of the dendrobiums the hard cane types the dendrobium phalaenopsis and bigabum types are actually starting to set spikes up or are in spike or blooming right now this is my laelia rubescens um, it's got these three good flower spikes coming out of it this is a good plant good bloomer um, of course, the blooming season isn't until um, the winter time, but these actually have long spikes and I'm just getting ready to uh, start sending them out. Like I said, hard cane dendrobium. This is a dendrobium fea cross. Um, I'll list that uh, in a little bit. Um, you can see here the this spike is two spikes are completely blooming, and you can see in the back there it's got um, a couple more spikes that are starting to send up. Um, like I've said before, growing them in full sun, this is actually the later part of the day, so it's not in as much full sun as it normally gets. Um, it gets all morning sun and all midday sun um, after about four o'clock. Um, it actually starts to get some shade. Um, if it was getting even more sun than that, then uh, it would actually be blooming more and putting up more spikes. This is Dendrobium sampran brown. Um, it's got three good spikes on it, four good spikes on it. Um, this plant uh, tends to bloom maybe about four or five times a year for me. Um, again, it grows in full sun. Um, it's kind of interesting because if you can see, and I'm hoping that the um, video will actually show the true color of the flowers. Um, it looks like it's coming up a little bit more red, but it's kind of like a purplish color, a purplish brown. Um, like I said, it's called Sampran Brown. If it's grown in more shade, the flowers actually look brown. But um, when it's grown in uh, more direct sunlight, uh, more of the reds and the purples come through. Really good plant. Uh, a friend of mine gave me that, and uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, really glad that I got it. Um, another thing that you can see that's right in here is um, a Schomburgia. Um It's just starting to set up um, a spike. I don't know if you can see it back there. So that's just getting the, the spike up. Um, Epidendrum Schomburgii, which is one of the cane stem epidendrums. You can see it's starting to spike up. There's another spike coming up there. Um, looks like I'm probably going to have seven or eight um, flower spikes on that plant this year. It put up a really good show last year. Had I think about five or six spikes. So I've got a couple more coming up on it. Another plant that I have um, coming into bloom. You can see it up there. That's Renanthera calcum red dragon. Um, this is the first year that this plant has uh, started to bloom. I actually got it um, at one of the shows a few years ago. This is the first time that it has bloomed. This is the third time blooming this year for this plant. Okay. 
And these are very good plants to have. They bloom often, just like most of the other um, vandas. Vandas that are crossed with this have a tendency to bloom pretty much year round. Um, I don't feed this as often as I should and probably water it as much as I should. Um, otherwise, I'd probably get even a few more blooms per year. Uh, you will see that I do have it in a pot. A lot of people have their vandas in vanda baskets. Renanthus ha have a tendency to really like to be pot bound or in some kind of a medium. It's not a coarse medium at all. It looks it. Um, it's mostly aliflor or hydrogen, um, which are these clay pellets that are filled with air. Um, and there is some sphagnum moss on the top. I do have a little bit of a mix of the sphagnum and the hydrogen throughout the mix. Um, but it just keeps growing and keeps blooming for me. I did actually cross this with a couple Phalaenopsis this year, so I'm hoping those seedlings come up. Um, you can also see they're also really good about getting out pieces from the base. I've got two big pieces up there, and I'm not going to be able to zoom in close to enough for you. There's two more pieces that are standing up on the other side. Okay, my. Dendrobium antonatum just went out of bloom. But what is coming into bloom, and I don't know if you can see the spike over here, is this is Dendrobium convolutum. I will post a picture of that as well. This is an interesting Dendrobium. I got this um, as a free gift with the uh, purchase of some Sabrellias that I got from Tropical Orchid Farm. And um, I have it growing in sphagnum moss, as you can see in the clear pot. The, uh, this is the first spike of the season. It has a tendency to just keep blooming and blooming and blooming. I can actually see um, from the back over here, there's another spike coming out up there. Um, it actually last year started blooming in uh, December and it bloomed all the way through June. So it actually put on a really good show for me. So this is my vanilla Ephyla. It's a very interesting vanilla. It's one of the leafless vanillas. So it's just a whole bunch of the stems. It's really neat. There's a lot of fembriation in the lip there with uh, purple. It has a very light fragrance, very sweet. Um, this is the third time this year that this plant has bloomed as well. You can see all along the little flowers, flower buds that are starting to pop out. Some more flowers down here. There's some more buds in the back. And you can even see right in there, there's some more flowers. Um, I got this one at a show, and somebody didn't know what it was. They just said it was some kind of a vanilla. They thought it was barbalata, which it's not. So um, I don't even know where they got it from. Um, but it's growing really wild. Uh, the way I pot up my vanillas is I have a plastic pot with sphagnum moss and in the center of that you can see the tree fern totem that I put in there. That allows the vanilla to just cling on with the roots and just allow it to keep going. Another nice thing about the fall is some uh, of the Catacetum Alliance is getting ready to bloom. Um, you can see here um, my Cygnoches. I've actually got two of them, it's two of the same. It's Psychnoches Wurzawixii. Had a very nice fragrant. Post a picture of that as well. Um, these are actually smaller plants. Um, the main plant actually started getting eaten by a grasshopper. Um, so I actually took the plant and uh, cut it up and uh, started some new growths out of it. Didn't think that they were uh, actually going to bloom this year, but the plant surprised me. And uh, like I said, I got two of them there. They're both getting ready to bloom. You can see in the back in the shadier area that I have in my growing section, some of my Phalaenopsis are getting ready to bloom. I don't grow a lot of Phalaenopsis. I know some people really like them because the flowers last. Um, I do have a few to enjoy. Um, this year they're actually spiking pretty early. You can see a spike back here off of that one. There's a spike here and a spike here. I will imagine that these are just um, because we did have a cool night uh, a couple months ago and that initiated the spiking. Um, once we actually get 
some more cool weather um, the end of November, beginning of December, or the end of December, um, I will imagine that they'll probably send up a lot more uh, spikes. Usually these things send up three, four spikes per year. Um, these are just one. I'm imagining, like I said, we just had a night of cool weather, so it initiated a little bit of a spike. I also wanted to show you I've got a Sabrea fragrance here. Um, it's about the time of the year for them to start uh, blooming. There's a flower spike coming up here. And you can see another one back here. Neat thing with this Sabrelia, a lot of people think Sabrellias are these really huge plants. Sabrellia fragrance is actually a smaller growing Sabrellia. Um, would fit comfortably in a window. Um, its flowers are small, still only last a day. Um, this one's very fragrant. Nice little white flower, but uh, very good if you don't have a lot of space and you want to try some Sabrellias. I also have another Sabrellia up top here. This is Sabrelia elegans. Looks very similar to fragrance. Blooms at a different time of the year. The flowers are just a little bit. So thanks for watching today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to write down below, or you can also join uh, the Let's Talk Orchids group on Facebook. Send me some questions there. I'd love to do some uh, question Q and A's on videos for you guys so that you can uh, watch and have some uh, replies maybe i can show you some of the things that you have questions too um, you can also click on one of the links below if you would like to help uh, out with the making of the videos you can make a donation or sponsor a video so hope you had a good day um, hope to see you next week and love to hear from you